Hey, it's not Keelan, it's Ben. And in this video, we'll be discussing what Zapier is. We'll be going over how it works, an example walkthrough, some popular use cases, and then finally some alternatives. Great, let's get straight into it. So Zapier is like a digital assistant that connects different apps and automates tasks for you. It's a no-code platform which has a catalog of softwares, which you can make talk to other softwares that are in the Zapier catalog. The origin of the name, it comes from API, which is a technology that Zapier uses to connect apps together. API allows two apps to speak to each other and then perform specific actions that you set. So here's how it works. Firstly, Zapier connects an app you already use like Gmail, Slack, Trello, or Shopify, even if those apps don't normally work together. A Zap is a workflow that you create. It tells Zapier what to do automatically when something happens in one app. Think of it like a, if this happens, then do that type of rule. So every Zap has a trigger. Trigger is the event that starts the actual Zap, like a new email arrives in Gmail. Then you have an action. This is what Zapier does after the trigger has happened, like save the email attachment to a Google Drive folder. It's designed to be easy to set up, just a few clicks. You don't have to be a tech head to actually get things going. All right, so I'm gonna jump into the Zapier platform now. This example is gonna be a very simple one, and we're gonna make it that every time I get an email with a specific subject line, then I want a message to be sent to a specific person in my Slack channel. Great, so when you hop into Zapier platform, it will look something like this. You'll have on the left-hand side ability to create the Zap or any of these functions over here through this orange button. Or if you're under Zaps, then you can just click on Create over here. Again, a zap is the automation that you will be building. Then you have tables. So tables is a tool for managing data in a table format. So similar to spreadsheets. And underneath that, you have interfaces, which allows you to build custom interfaces for interacting with your data. Then below that, we have three really cool ones. We have the chatbot. It allows you to create AI-powered chatbots that answer questions, resolves issues, and nurture leads. Then below that, we have Canvas, which is the place where your team can visualize the different processes and automate more of the business through AI-powered systems. And below that, we have agents. So Zap your agents is where you can create AI teammates. But going back to Zaps, we're going to create that example, which is again, if an email is sent with a specific subject line, then I want Zapier to pick that up and then message my teammate in Slack. So to do that, we're going to come to Zaps, click on create in the top right. We're going to say new Zap. So when you just enter your Zap or your automation workflow, you'll see that you have Copilot here. This is in beta stage, but it's pretty cool. What you do is you kind of tell them what you want to do. In this case, I want to say send a message to Slack once an email is received with a specific subject line. Then if you type it in here, it will automatically create the next steps for you. But just to show you how to do it manually, we're going to come to trigger here. Trigger is going to be the thing that happens to then create the reaction. So in this case, we want it to be Gmail and to recognize a specific subject line. So we're going to say the trigger event is new email matching search. And below that, we're going to say sign in. So we're going to connect that account that we want Zapier to read from. So once you've connected your account, then you're going to click on continue, which will take you to the configure stage. This is where we're going to set the keyword that we want it to search for. So in this case, we're going to call it Zapier video. And then we're going to click on continue underneath. Then it's going to say that you can test the trigger. We're first going to build the action. Then we're going to test it all together to see if it works. So we're going to come down to action and we want the action to send a message to a specific user in Slack. So we're going to come down to Slack, click it, and we're going to say the action event is to send a direct message. So you can click on it there. Same as connecting the Gmail, we're going to connect our Slack account. So click on sign in, click on allow, and then you'll see that your account has been connected. Once you click on continue, then you'll have the ability to configure what you want the action to actually do. So in this case, we want to send a private message and then we have the option to choose who the private message has been sent to. So in this case, I'm going to send it to Keaton. I'm going to say the message is, hey, we are testing a Zapier action. Then you'll see that you have many other additional options like sending it as a box. I'm going to say no, and then I'm going to not include a link to the Zap. You can adjust it however you like. Once you're happy, click on continue. Then before we test the actual steps now, I just want to send myself an email so that we can have something that is picked up. Okay, so I just sent myself an email and clicked on test. Once I did that, I'm going to come now to Slack to see if the message was now received. So I'll see Keys and Walker, he received a message from myself saying, hey, we are testing a Zapier action. It took me less than two minutes to set up, so it is really simple, but you also had options to customize it more, make it do more actions if you wanted it to do that, but then also complete a variety of other different actions, possibly even in different softwares. Then you'll just come on and click on add step and you can choose what you want it to do. You'll see you have many different apps here. You have over 7,000 apps to choose from. Then you also have different tools on the side here, like making it go down different paths or formatting something in a specific way, as well as filtering, coding, looping, or whatever it may be. Okay, so that was a very simple example, but you can start to understand the power that it has and how simple it is to create it for your personal or your business operations. I would say it is generally more used for businesses, but you can use it for whatever you want. In personal life, it could be to automate flight check-in or email summarizer and zapping it to OpenAI, weather notifications via SMS, or to save email attachments to Dropbox 
Dropbox or OneDrive for easy access. And popular use cases for businesses are usually to notify a Slack channel when a new customer places an order in Shopify, for example, to create tasks in Trello or Asana from new emails, or to automatically add new Facebook lead ads to a CRM like Salesforce or HubSpot. Zapier is popular because it handles tasks that people and businesses do all the time. It allows you to complete repetitive tasks that you otherwise would need to have an actual person to do and naturally making it more efficient and doing it at a fraction of the cost. So there is a couple of good alternatives as well. You have Make, which is formerly Integramed, which was known for its visual workflows and advanced customization options. And you have Pabli Connect, which is a more cost-effective option with unlimited workflows in higher tier plans. Then we have Go High Level. It is focused more on marked agencies, combining automation with CRM and client management tools. High Level is a great option if you want an all-in-one solution CRM that includes Zapier style workflows. It's worth checking this video out to find out more. Zapier is best for small to medium-sized businesses looking for ease of use. It does support more than 7,000 apps, whereas Pabli and the other alternatives are cheaper but have less apps that you can connect with. High Level eliminates tools like Zapier many times over because of how much you can do internally. Everything is built to branch off to other internal features and with High Level, you don't have to glue multiple softwares together so it breaks less and it's more efficient. And with automations in Zapier, it's just a matter of time before they break for some reason. Here you have it. Zapier is a super powerful tool, a lot of flexibility in what you can achieve and simple enough to do yourself. They do now also have AI functionality which will help you in the creation process of your zaps or your workflows without having to understand everything yourself. So you can just kind of tell it what you want it to do and it will give you a pretty accurate workflow implemented. You can then go adjust the settings to customize the workflow further. I would recommend not to just jump straight into it and try and build something on the spot but rather first identify in your business's operations first that are manual or taking up a lot of time and then working backwards to automate it in Zapier. Also do really recommend looking into high level if you want an in-house platform that covers everything that you would need to run a business including an automation feature with unlimited workflows build and check out this video to see what that's all about.